Welcome to the Onyx Report, a program that critically analyzes the experiences, histories, and perceptions of black males in American society. I'm Dr. T. Hassan Johnson, Associate Professor of Africana Studies at Fresno State, black male advocate, and black male studies scholar. In the program, we examine current events while engaging concepts ranging from institutionalized anti-black misandry to gynocentrism from a black masculinist perspective. Our goal is to remind people of black men's humanity. Call in after a half hour to the show at 310-928-7733. All right. Welcome back to the Onyx Report. Um, This is our last show for November, so we kind of getting it on, and as I'm approaching um, finals week, uh, things are getting a little harried, um, in terms of, of my classes. So, you know, things have been a little crazy, but I have the honor today of getting a chance to have a conversation with a brother whose, uh, whose work I'm, I'm just being introduced to and enjoying. Um, I usually go over some of the, uh, current events, um, but I'm not really going to delve into that this week. Uh, I think some of the major things out, you know, people are, are kind of following, and um, I'm not as driven about dealing with. So maybe next uh, next conversation we'll get into Kaepernick and, you know, some of the other things going on. Uh, I'll try to take seriously this impeachment with Trump and pretend like it's not a, a dog and pony show. But in the meantime, um, a good brother that uh, I've been able to finally get in touch with uh, through Facebook. Um, I saw a couple of online sort of uh, commercials that he did on his book book entitled Heart on Break, Taking a Break from Relationships to Become a Better Man. Um, I caught it a couple of times and I think I kind of put it off because I was like, nah, I'm not ready for that yet. Um, But then I went ahead and purchased this book and I I just highlighted it up like crazy because there were so many elements of it that definitely spoke to me. So I want to introduce Brother Nakata, uh, author of Heart on Break, and get a chance to talk with him about the book and urge you uh, to check it out um, because it's dealing with some of the stuff that uh, I think black men desperately need to, to to grapple with on a whole different set of terms. Um, while you're here, uh, please feel free to call in, especially after the half hour mark, and make sure that um, you, uh, you take a look at uh, patreon.com slash TH Johnson, support the show. Um, but from here, I want to introduce Brother Nakata. Nakata, go ahead and say something to the people. Hello, everyone. Thanks for having me on your show, brother. Oh, man. Thanks for coming on, man. I wasn't sure if I was going to catch you for a minute because <laughs> I know you running, man. You, uh, you must be, uh, you know, really been, you, I think you've been showcasing the book quite a bit. Um, I would say, um, but it's, 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 it's well-deserved. I think it's an excellent work, man. Um, what I do is I, I generally like to showcase brothers. Uh, well, it's not even just brothers. I, I showcase what I identify as masculinists because I developed the concept of black masculinism. And really when you boil it down, there are a lot of theoretical concepts we can get into, but when you boil it down, it's actually people that take black men seriously and treat them like human beings. And you'd be surprised, and I'm not talking about you, Nakata, I'm just saying in general, mm-hmm. people would probably be surprised how many, how, how much of the time um, we don't regard black men as humans, uh, human beings. And so that's really the heart of it. And so when I read your work, uh, one of the things that kind of blew me away is you did something that a lot of the, uh, the dating coaches, lifestyle coaches, relationship coaches don't do. You actually targeted men and particularly black men in this work. Um, And you mentioned it early in the book, but I want you to talk to us a little bit about why you made that decision in an industry that is so overwhelmingly focused on patronizing women. How did that come about? Man, um, it's an interesting kind of thing, actually, because um, initially people would say, you know, I've been told, especially when it, when it first came to me because I was going to do a podcast mm-hmm. and I had done podcasts before with my vegan and my wellness businesses. And so I was familiar with that. And then it just evolved. I, I felt like it was too personal. I was like, yo, I'm not going to do a podcast with all my feelings out like this. But, <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> right. But, you know, um, writing was much easier to do. And, you know, in the line of business that I did before in regards to before I I wrote the book, 
you know, it was almost like I had this real feeling that, you know, just putting it in perspective for myself meant mm-hmm. that is either people are going to just resonate with it if it happened to them or if they knew somebody with these similar experience happened to, you know, mm-hmm. who went through the same thing. So, you know, it became a book. And I chose to go after men and men only men because I, I didn't. I, it's not for women. Okay. <laughs> and, you know, it, it, it's like I, I, I see these other guys doing what they do. And I respect every man's hustle. And women are the main target. You know, in my work before, we knew that we targeted women. I, I worked in advertising and marketing. So, mm. you know, women, we understand the demographics. And how powerful the the female dollar is because the female dollar is essentially the male dollar, <laughs> baby mm. times three, mm. you know. So times three males, you yeah. know. So, um, I felt as if it was something that if people would just look at what I was talking about, it would either it, it something that applies to you and we all go through it. Like there's, I don't know anybody who hasn't gone through. The kind of things that I talk about in my book when it comes to relationships, women, and, you know, really finding yourself as a man. Like, it doesn't matter what age you go through it. You you really go through it. And it, it is a, a a masculine thing. Mm-hmm. Now, see, yes. in, 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 now there's a couple of things that come to mind because I think of men's rights activist, uh, uh, Dr. Warren Farrell. And he talked about how, um, you know, women's dollars are, are spent on women and men's dollars are spent on women. So it's interesting that you point that out. <laughs> and that explains why so much of this industry, and there's a lot of industries like that. Like, you know, when I think about when I got married, you know, back in 2000, every time we went to a facility, you know, that was focused around providing some service in regard to the wedding, they didn't talk to me. They talked to her. And then they, <laughs> and they waited for me to give them a check. You know what I mean? So there, so it's definitely that kind of thing where there's a focus in a particular way on women. And so when I saw how you approached this in the book, part of what I, 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 you know, just very early on walked away with is he's recognizing that not everything boils down the same way for everybody, right? There are things that are specific to women. There are things that are specific and germane to men and, and, and things that kind of black men may deal with more than others. And I appreciated that. So even in your life examples that we'll get into over the course of the next 50 odd minutes, you know, you brought in life examples that I think brothers could identify with. And that, and that's one of the things that, that I really liked about the book. Cause when I've read, you know, different types of books along these lines, I didn't see myself, you know what I mean? Mm. I, didn't, I, I didn't really see my experience in the stories. You know, they may, they may have had some good theoretical concepts, but you'll, you'll talk about an idea and then you'll hit us with a life example. And I'm on the floor. Cause I'm like, okay, I've been there before. I remember when right. I did that, you know what I mean? And, and so the examples hitting home definitely, definitely made the difference. But so you, you, you kind of explained what brought you to focusing on men. Um, Tell us a little bit about, you know, your upbringing. How did you get to this point where you said, okay, this is the work I need to do? Um, t- tell us about how that came about. Honestly, bro, um, I, I felt like um, prior to writing a book, I mean, well, not that I felt, but prior to writing this book, I was writing another book um, before on in the health field. So, you know, many of my friends and my peers and family members, that's what they expected. But in reality, bro, like life was really kicking my ass in in the the, the relationship department. And it really didn't matter um, how well or how many, you know, how, how good, how much money you're making or something like that. If you don't really have that prioritized, and let's say if it's higher a priority than your actual, you know, life's purpose, your work and the fundamental things, then it becomes a problem. Like almost always like and, and there's no escaping that. And it seems like that's like where we we all get caught up, like first and foremost. And boom, what do you do from there? You know, you, you're left reacting instead of responding and, and no one is really be able to help you mm-hmm. because everybody's saying to you, okay, well, you know, this happens to everybody, you know? 
Oh, right. Um, but, you know, um, I did wanted to say also, you know, um, to any of my listeners and out there, you know, appreciate you guys for tuning in and, you know, hold the calls for, I guess, about 30 minutes or so. Right. Um, yeah. We'll do that at 5.30. Yeah. Definitely. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, so, so can you talk a little bit about um, the, 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 you know, the earliest relationships that really started to bring you into this idea of taking a break because the the book is centered around the idea as is the title hard on break where men actually make a decision to step back from relationships and take a break and it's a targeted break where you actually talk about what things men need to do during that time but one of the things you talk about very early on in the book is how many of us really even from you know high school you know kind of go from relationship to relationship you know over and over and over again and 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 we don't really take stock so, so can you talk about, you know, why you make that argument and maybe even some of the relationships that, that really kind of brought you to that point of, of framing what a break had to be? Well, you know, honestly, bro, I got to say, and I think, I don't know if I, I wrote this in my book, but my relationships were pretty good until they weren't, you know. And... <laughs> <laughs> right, right. <laughs> you know, and it was like, I had good girlfriends, like, you know, nobody cheated on me. I didn't have to worry about other dudes. And, you know, they were beautiful and cooperative, you know, ever since my teenage years into my early 20s. You know, I I never had a problem with women until I had, you know, a problem and I and I had it twice. And, you know, and I think that um, revolved more around how I took becoming a father, you know? But I snapped the fuck out of that shit, bro. I did. Okay. okay. And, 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 and you know, and that, and the only thing I did differently was focus on me for the benefit of all these people now, who are dependent on me. That's interesting. Because the, the narrative we get, especially as men, is that your job is to focus on others. Your job is to sacrifice. Absolutely. Others. Now, here's the change, though. There was a point where that was the common language. And then e- even though it's still expected, it's still socially expected of us. Now we're not allowed to talk about that. So so you're supposed <laughs> to focus on others, but you're not supposed to mention it. You, you, you're supposed to look right. at other people's needs, but you're not supposed to ask anything for yourself. But you actually make the argument that that's precisely what needs to happen. Explain that. Well, here's the thing, right? We live in a culture where, you know, everything is like, you know, as a health coach, right? One of the biggest things that you'll find um, is wrong with the health of many is what you call estrogen dominance. Mm. And, um, you know, my I I did urban farming and um, I'm associated with a lot of farms in my area because I went through this stage where I really wanted to feed myself. But anyways. You don't have seeds in watermelons. You don't have seeds in grapes. You don't have um, seeds in a variety of different things that used to have seeds. And what do seeds um, typically represent? Right. Production of a new crop. Exactly. The masculine energy Mm. for the most part. Mm -hmm. So now if you remove the seed by, by genetic breeding or whatever you do, you're basically turning it into a hermaphrodite. Mm -hmm. So now, oh Yes. And so, and that allows for the pollinization or the cross pollinization and various other things to 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 keep the you know, and they continue genetically, and sometimes they get breeds naturally that don't develop seed, but most of the times it's developed to omit seeds, and so for the ease of people. So now, something that had a masculine charge does not have that charge anymore. The mm. same thing with the foods that we eat and many of the, 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 the byproducts. So we are already being like unslotted by, you know, things that are um, what you call hormone distributors. Mm. Dis- you know, th- they disturb us for the most mm. part. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so we're leaning to- towards like not being as masculine as you naturally would be in a world that is less toxic and you know also in a world where you're not really you know killing yourself 
you know, to be a man. You know, it, it, it's a natural occ occurrence. So mm -hmm. you have people who who are who are not as masculine as they once were before, bro. And 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 it's and it also you have women who are stepping into the masculine role based on you know the missing masculine. So like to be able to like put it in a perspective of how we all were gypped <laughs> on masculinity like you know we've got like the watered down versions and the version that came before us like quite frankly a large majority of the dudes that are like 60 and 70 they suck too and they actually suck worse than we did because mm. you know they didn't you know as bad as people want to say it is these days bro like men my age 35 to 40 you know like generally you know, guys that I go to school with, went to college with, various other things, they ain't slapping the shit out of nobody. You mm -hmm. get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But almost everybody's daddy or the granddaddy probably snatched up a woman. It, like, we don't do that type of stuff. We we are... It's that a different our, environment. It it's, is a different environment. It, it, <laughs> it, reminds me, it reminds me of works like, uh, I don't know if you heard of Brother Tyrone Hayes, uh, American biologist from Berkeley, uh, but he talked about like the herbicides and uh, the atrazine in particular. And how atrazine he, is a big one. Right, and he noticed in, in frogs how it was actually changing the gender and feminizing the frogs. And he was saying, this is actually having an impact on, on people. You know what I mean? And, and and for the most part, I'm not sure how many people took them seriously, but that's on a biological level. But even on a social and cultural level, there's really, and I've been talking about this on social media for the last few years, there's this, there's this push to androgenize gender in general and to soften and tamp down men and, and make Why the argument that, that we all have to be the same and there are no differences between men and women, even to the point and this is something interesting I've been seeing annually now. When we get to Mother's Day, we celebrate women in all kinds of forms. We celebrate women that aren't mothers that will one day maybe be mothers. But when, it, <laughs> but when it comes to Father's Day, now all of a sudden you have to include everybody and we can't center the fathers and there's a problem with that. And, you know, so there's this really kind of knee jerk reaction, even on a social and cultural level that we've learned, um, you know, in, in regard to taking men and how we deal with them and there's this dismissal of men that's right. become widely accepted so again that's one of the things that i appreciated about the book because you targeted the group that's mostly dismissed and you said not only you know do do these men merit reflection these men need to take a break to reflect on themselves so, yeah, in, in, so in a relationship setting break that down what does that do for a man to step all right. back all right the, the the step back is 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 brilliant as you can see in the nba like the evolution of the step back has changed the game step back threes stepping back gives you better vision you know but the vision that you really want to focus on is yourself okay and the focus on and and like the issue is like dudes are are, are self-exploding in relationships Mm -hmm. It's like you, you. It's like you don't have no pride to to, to actually be a man and, and deal with some shit on your own. Listen, I give you an example, bro. I was visiting, you know, we were on a vacation, me and my daughter, and we were visiting family and whatnot. And my sister, she was picking me up, right? And there was somebody that said to her, <laughs> "Don't pick that boy up. He's a man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> let him let him figure out how to move through the city on <laughs> on his mm -hmm. own." Mm -hmm. <laughs> My, mm -hmm. my, sister, my sister was like, man, like, where are you from? That's not how we, right. we, we, that's not how we do. But it was funny how his perception of being a man involved solving your own problem, mm -hmm. which is, which is true. Right. Mm -hmm. So like, you need to be able to solve your own problem with your wise man, with your father, with, your, with the men and the elders, or be able to decipher if the information that you're getting from these cats is actually helping you become the best version of yourself. Because, mm -hmm. you know, if you're a go-getter, right, you're probably 10... I mean, I'm not just talking about a talking go-getter, a, a, a do-go-getter. If you're a go-getter, you're probably about 10 to 15 percent of the, the whole population. You get what I'm saying? Okay. Most 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 people just want to do something and do something really well. Whereas you have different kind of people who want to start shit and 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 expand it to various different levels and change the world with their inventions and their ingenuity, right? So mm -hmm. if you're that type of person, right, 
you're going to need a support supportive system in order to thrive. Now, if your woman or your society or your culture doesn't even believe you have that kind of greatness, no, we're just going to limit all the greatness to the existing billionaires and some kind of technological advance type of stuff that'll make you a millionaire or make you rich, you know, or, you know, but there's so many other great stories of what men are doing that are being suppressed that mm -hmm. is not being released f you know from the perspective that it is there's some shit that's just really masculine mm -hmm. and, and 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 it should never offend women and in reality it doesn't offend women it, it this is the the propaganda and the foolishness that you're talking about especially when it pertains to these days and you know mother worshiping i love my mama more than anybody i know you know what I'm saying? But who, 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 who's to say that? Everybody feels like they love their mom with the most, right? Right. <laughs> you know, unless you have a bad relationship with your mama. And then mm -hmm. you might not love your mama. You might not love no woman. But at least you, if you take a break, you, you got to deal with that shit. You mm -hmm. have to be able to put yourself in a position. So the break is really all about solving your problems, getting the help that you need to solve your problems. And then look, just just see how relationships going to change. You <laughs> It just, See, and that's important because I, I, when you talk about taking a break and, and solving your problems, we don't often think of it that way. You know what I mean? You, 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 you'll be in a relationship, things will go as they go. And then, of course, by the time they end, and, and a lot of times they may even end poorly, um, we're on to the next. You know, and, and a lot of us and a lot of us are taught and this is especially through media. Right. We're taught that another relationship, another person is going to make you happy, make you look a certain way. And so you do. And you might find that, you know, you, you didn't, you, you've experienced so much damage that you're not even paying attention to that you're really bringing a lot of trauma from one relationship to the next, right? Talk about what men, you know, going from relationship to relationship, what men tend to bring into a situation when we haven't taken a break. What does that look like? We, oh, my gosh, bro. It looks like various things. Oh my gosh. It, it like if you've I've had a lot of women in my life, you know, tell me stuff that I'd be like, wow, like he told you that? Wow, he did that? I'd be like, wow. Like, you know, in in some stuff like if you had a sisters, like you would bring out the guns. You get what I'm saying? Like dudes okay. are do men. So you say if, if if it had happened to my sister, I would have brought out a gun to protect her because of what happened. And, and is that what you mean? Like you talking about in terms of what men have brought to the table with other women? What I'm saying is the, the result of not dealing with your problems mm -hmm. and then having to go through that with a woman, you're devaluing her by, by um, you know, just her experience now becomes some dysfunctional shit. Mm. And, you know, at that particular moment, you may think or may believe that you're not dysfunctional because, you know, the dysfunction that's, that's happening in your life is happening in, in three out of five people you know's life. Mm -hmm. So th that's a normative kind of thing. So we're not really ex looking at our dysfunctions as dysfunctions. Now we're talking about it more on social media and various other places. So the awareness has increased tremendously, right? Mm -hmm. Just like in the case of mental illness, right? People are talking about it more now and people are, are being real about their various states of um, feelings. But in real talk, like if you, if you, if you, let's say, for example, if you got money, what, you don't have feelings, you should just pay. Mm. <laughs> Mm. You, you know, like if you mm -hmm. got money, does that mean that you can't leave? You can't not leave a tip to somebody who's, who's a shitty waiter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? So it's like, in reality, like if we don't really focus in on dealing with these problems before we go into these relationships with these women, like we got to consider what, what is going on. Like, you know, a lot of us, man, you know, people get mad at me, you know, like, shit, I'm used to it. You know, I, I, I say what needs to be said, especially in this department. Like, the, it ain't no badge of honor to have baby mamas. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Right. It ain't no badge of honor. So for us who, who have, who, who have, who have women that, you know, that we're no longer with, um, you know, that they have our children or whatever the case is, and you're moving on, like, you know, that's two separate homes. That's mm -hmm. two separate estates. Mm -hmm. That's two separate um, incomes. They're, they're perhaps two separate mentalities. 
and right. you know what i mean like you got to have a plan for these things and mm-hmm. and like you you, you don't want to wait till you get in the situation you know what i mean <laughs> for to be trying to solve these situations with a woman so the best so you're saying that like the best solution is to is to actually deal with yourself to where you 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 probably won't create the situation in the first place right um and you might even be talking about issues that go back uh not only through relationships that we've had but even through childhood or even bang, bang. not only so so childhood because there's something I want to say about that in a second but also in terms of the relationships we sort of inherit right the relationships we grow up seeing and that can be in your household it could be in your community it could be on Simple tv stuff. but but you and in, you inherit these experiences and these ideas that are often dysfunctional and traumatic and you're carrying that um there's a paper by a good colleague of mine Tommy Curry uh, it's by Curry and Utley it's called she touched me and it's it's an interview with black men who have been violated at a young age sexually right Man. by women women and men you know what i mean and 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 in the paper kind of studies what happens to these men as they come into adulthood carrying the baggage of those experiences Now it doesn't help that we live in a society that really doesn't care about boys, especially black boys. So you carry these experiences that nobody validates and they were traumatic. But then nobody you bring them into it. relationships. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You bring them into relationships and 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 so the paper kind of deals with uh several like five different men if I'm not mistaken that that bring these different kinds of things and it's everything it affects everything from you know erectile dysfunction to communication in relationships to you know even even the very idea of what what you want out of a relationship all of those things you know are already kind of damaged for those men just there just with their childhood right. experiences and so then when we factor in what you're talking about you start having relationships and you know maybe junior high or high school and then that you know as you get older you still you know have one relationship after the next and as soon as one ends you jump into the next one and the next thing you know you look back and it's like okay i've been doing this for 10 15 years 20 you know, 30 years yeah and it's like okay wait a minute you know um so that's definitely something that that i i i appreciated about the book because even the idea of taking a break goes against what we say men you know need to do we say men need to keep it pushing we need to to just get up and walk it off and and go start again but actually taking the time to say okay so let me slow down and you yeah. and you talk about this in the book where you say you know let let me look over the pattern of my last number of relationships and see if i see a, if i see a pattern if i see you know the same kind of things happening over and over again and let me actually reflect on what that means like what talk about the importance of that why is it important, important to reflect on that the the reflection the self reflection or self introspection is it's everything because that's where you build your 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 belief system within yourself You get what I'm saying? I talk about this in the book because how you view yourself is really going to be about how conscious you and aware you are aware you are of what you're doing and why you're doing it. You get what I'm saying? It means that you have to snap out of automatic response where you're just do, you know where you're just following the program that mom taught you dad taught you school taught you you work taught you the neighborhood taught you your big brother taught you somebody's teaching you some shit and you and, and 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 you might think that that's how you supposed to you're supposed to con- conduct yourself but you have a unique kind of thing that's unique onto you yeah you might be like somebody in your family but chances are you're not like anybody else you know like you know it, 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 but if you pretend to be you may you may you may think you're somebody you're not and that mm-hmm. purpose and that those goals that you set you'll find these goals failing like a mug the mm-hmm. shit just not working out because mm-hmm. your perception of who you are is is not really built on who you are cuz you never took any time for yourself listen mm-hmm. it's rare that we got the guys that are born musicians you know born um athletes you know that that's not a huge percentage of us bro mm-hmm. but everybody's got something so like 
like this is your freaking like i'm excited about this you know i work with guys all the time because like it's like you could do this shit almost mentally you get what i'm saying like see mm -hmm. how much you got to gain you know i got a new court and st um course coming out and it's for men who are at a position where they stabilize themselves in there and they're looking to welcome women into their world you get what mm -hmm. i'm saying you've done mm -hmm. the work you know you're ready for what you you you, you can afford it too do you get what I'm saying? That's big. And, and so that's a big thing because you got to be able to afford, you know, what it is that you want. You know, let's not put woman in front of it. Put mm -hmm. everything in front of it. Mm -hmm. got, you, you know, mm -hmm. and so the course is really about men being able to understand why do all of this stuff mm -hmm. like you, you got to be able to set the course out for what it is that you want for your life. And really and truly, man, you don't need anybody else's influence after a certain point. You need your own thought, your own intentions, your own awareness, whatever you have to do in your life to, to, to spend some time with yourself thinking about what it is that you want to do. So that way you can lay out the foundation or the plan for it. I guarantee you, I'm not saying you have to do it alone. I'm just saying doing it unattached and this and from a woman in a relationship will be will, will will i mean it'll 10x your growth because if you can do it consciously right you know it, it, it's just like anything else like you know i do stuff like i reward myself with you know you know watching a show after i get my work done or after after i hit certain goals you, you got to be able to play with your mind you know it's a mental thing you got to be able to do what you got to do to get yourself into doing what you need to do and if that usually means you know dropping all of the people who are not with the program mm. you got to you know you got to be like a it's like a you know it's like a a real process of hiring somebody to um to be in a company like you got a lot of people who want this position you know you got to be on top of your game if if it's a top paying position to get it so mm -hmm. you you know like this is like your 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 talent your purpose your gift it means so much to you it means everything that can free you from slavery you know you know when i when i heard you talk about this you mentioned this a minute, a minute ago and it got me thinking you know, because as a professor, many of my students are athletes, you know what I mean? Hmm. And whether you're talking about track, swimming, football, tennis, basketball, when I watch these athletes focus on their craft, they take a certain amount of time off to master it, right? They bring in people into their lives that can complement where they're going, and they move away from relationships that complicate their plans. And so, so I guess what I'm saying is, I see us already doing that when it comes to things we value, but we don't do it for ourselves. So if you say, okay, you know, even before I even think about a relationship, I want to get my stuff in order. How come we can't put in the same level of discipline and, and apprenticeship that we'll put into other things? Whether you want to be an electrician or you want to play in the NBA, you put time into mastering that that craft how come we don't put time into mastering ourselves how come I, I mean you you, you know what I'm, what I'm saying go ahead it's simple it's because everyone will support you if you're freaking gonna be an nba player tennis player whatever the fuck everyone's going to support you not everyone's going to support you in all these particular things that you should be doing Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And not everyone's going to support you when when you become a writer. Not everyone's going to support you become a professor. But guess what? If your ass was selling shoes, you'll get a lot more support. Mm -hmm. If you were selling some products, that's why I tell people all the time. I sell books. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Most folks don't read unless they want to. So, mm -hmm. like, it's not the same as selling shoes. Right. Everybody in my family will have, um, and, and everybody I know will have my my my, my shoes if it was shoes, because they'd be some fly shoes. Mm. But the point is, everybody's not gonna read my book because reading is just some shit that <laughs> it requires no, some, it, it, it requires some extra extra mile, extra motivation. You know, it ain't for everybody. No, so that's, like this, that's definitely true. So therefore. Shoot, everybody gets gets. It's pretty obvious what the benefit is for everyone if you're going to become a movie star or an athlete or mm -hmm. or certain certain things. But if you're not, then what? 
Mm-hmm. You're not valued. You still valued like a mug. <laughs> well, especially if you if you come to know you know yourself. Like if you come to the point where you understand your weaknesses, your flaws, your gifts, your strengths, and you actually see this the this thing I've said I've said a couple times. Um, I have an organization of young men that I work with at my campus, uh, and mm-hmm. and at one point, uh, it's about two years ago, we were having a conversation, and I asked them how many of you have dated women that had lists? And they were like, what do you mean lists? I said, well, lists, like they had a list of requirements for whoever they dealt with. All of them raised their hands, right? Oh. You had you had to be over six feet tall. You know, you had to make six figures. And these were men who were 17 to 20 years old and they were told they needed to make six figures right now, not in the future. Like you need mm. to be able to make six figures right now to be worth my time. So these women had lists, it's, you know, six figure income. Uh, you need to have your own place, your own car, you know, all these kind of dynamics, even though, you know, we're moving into a recession, you still have to have all these things to be worth my time. And then I asked the men, I said, how many of you have a list? Not one hand went in the air. Wow. Not, not one hand. And this is what I, this is what I'm getting I never to had a list term. neither. You see what I mean? That's what I'm talking about. Neither did I. But it dawned on me in asking the question, why do I not have a list? And part of that was women have been, you know, especially since the 1980s, they've been kind of socialized to see themselves in a particular way and demand something from partners. Men, not so much. I mean, we we've we kind of. You know, what we're taught is, you know, she kind of comes into your life and she floats in on the air and makes everything special. (laughs) You have to be worthy of her, but you are not to ask anything of her. You know what I mean? So so even and even when you talk about marriage, you need to be able to provide a home. You need to be able to provide structure and security and protection. But when you ask, what is it that she's supposed to provide? Men will have a blank look on their face because beyond sex. You know, we don't really have a sense. So to take time off to say, okay, not only am I going to figure out who I am, I'm actually going to figure out what I need. And that's not something I ever hear men really talk about until the last decade where men actually even ask the question. What, you know, what is it that I I want to have? What are, you know, those kind of questions we are not really taught to ask ourselves. Right. You know, it's ironic because we 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 all have a genetic bru- blueprint that um attracts the other genetic or it's composite or it's, it's opposite mm-hmm. but it's i say composite in the sense where there are some markers within us that another person makes us feel whole does it make us whole no but it makes us feel whole in that particular department and we're constantly attracted to these people Mm -hmm. so we're going to be attracted who we to who we are but the emphasis is just really on the attraction when it comes to the male species as of lately Mm -hmm. and so now what it is is we've lost this is what i talk about in my new course we've lost what it means means the we, we, the art of courting mm-hmm. we don't know mm-hmm. how to court women we don't know what the purpose of courtship is and so therefore you don't even know what you want because you don't even go it over listing these things or talking about these things um enough with yourself or with any of your quote-unquote dates mm-hmm. so what are you doing that's why i say in my in my course is most dates these days is just sex auditioning that's right. That, right. You know, that's that's really what it is. So when a man actually learns how to court, he's learning. It's it's like it's from the saying how, you know, if you read um, Robert Greene's any of his books on mastery or, you know, kingship or various other things in the king's court, there are many people vying for a position. Mm-hmm. You know, at, at, at any point, you know, the goal is to gain favor with the king. So that way, because the king's ultimate objective, what despite what people think it is, is to show favor to, to amongst his clansmen. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. the the king has an exceptional ability to recognize the talented or, or the up and coming and the various different people and, 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 and put some love on them and put some light on them. And so that's what, you know, we are all looking for in courtship. So in courtship, you're you're doing a dance, trying to get what it is that you want, because that's what courtship in, in, in the in, in the in the royal court would be like. You know, it's getting a position for yourself. So that's how marriage and relationships need to be. The physical aspect is always going to be quick and easy. Can mm-hmm. I do it or not? Like mm-hmm. you, you, you know, you make these these 
these physical aspect connections instantaneously. And then if you've made enough of these instantaneous connections and then that led to sex in almost instantaneously, then you already know what the results of that is. The right. the if you want to gamble that ballpark and try to curve, you know, the ocean it, it, to, to to just because your sexual appetite is, is that much raging, go ahead and you'll fail. Eventually you'll realize that yes, it's very important, perhaps one of the most important things because as they say, attraction is not a choice. But beyond that, there has to be metrics and measurements of, of, of and things that you're looking for. That could be cultural, that could be societal, that mm -hmm. could be based on your actual needs. Let's say, mm -hmm. for example, with with myself, right? I've always kind of been the entrepreneur boyfriend. So my girlfriends better they they were always on their hustle with me. <laughs> you, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like or or helping me in my business. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I've employed lots of women in my in my in my twenties and thirties. That's just that's how it is. But I always wanted and needed somebody who was gonna help me do my shit because I was always doing something. Mm -hmm. That's the importance of the break and the time that you spend alone so that way you know what to do, you know how to do things, you have some proficiency, you have, you know, things that have developed into things that you can monetize, you know, you know how to take care of yourself, you know so, how to be by yourself, you know how so to then, love yourself. So then for you taking a break it sounds like you're saying one of the things you came to is like okay in a relationship i need a woman that can support my business folk my business goals right see but that and, and that's what i appreciate about it because that might be different for every 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 person you know what i mean that absolutely that for you is important whereas like i have a good friend of mine who has been in several unhappy marriages his la his longest was 20 years you know just and he started right. his own business he started his own business from the ground up. You know, she was, you know, wasn't very supportive at all. And then when he took a break, right, he actually decided, you know what, I need a certain type of support. And he defined that support unapologetically. And that's one of the things I find that men, you know, we haven't really been taught to do as well, to be unapologetic about the things we value. Right. So he, he, he met only, another only rich men can do that. Or, uh, right. Well, for, <laughs> for, for him, he met a new woman. And he told her in the in the courting phase that when he's taking the time to get to know her, because and this is what I also appreciate about about the book is that taking the time to actually get to know her can save you a good couple decades of hell. Decades. I you mean, know what I mean? It, 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 just it taking the time to ask her questions and listen and be like, oh, you're not somebody I need to deal with. <laughs> like, you know, but just and taking the time. Right. And see, that's the issue with us men. We don't want to take the time because in many cases we want to speed up to the goal, which in most cases is sex. Well, we're going to get to that in a second. Go ahead. Yeah. Stay, and, 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 and so therefore what happens in these situations is this. You know that she's been through some shit, but you don't want to hear it. So therefore, you know, you, you don't want to hear no sad story. You don't want to hear no damsel in distress story. You just know that she's very attractive. You want to be with her and she might let you. So the fast, you know, you deal with the consequences of this later on, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and it's a shame that, you know, we, we still have a lot of guys that's out here that's doing this. They, they spoiling these young girls. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And, you know, I guess I've been there before, but like, you know, it, it's it's not looking up and up the way mm -hmm. the relationship thing is, you know, um, you know, in my work, you know, I really you know, men don't want to hear this sometimes, but I really advocate for marriage, you know, and I re really advocate with cutting down on your body count just for kicks, mm -hmm. you know, like, you know, like I, because, you know, that time, if you have, if you don't have your ish together, right? Mm -hmm. If you are out here, you know, blowing money fast on um, fast food, <laughs> And, and 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 monthly subscriptions and stuff. You get what I'm saying? If sure. this is what if this is what life is and and there is no drive for anything that makes you a better person, you know, makes you happy, makes you fulfilled, makes you who you are. You get what I'm saying? No, it's, like it's definitely. But but you see, this is what I was saying about my friend a moment ago. He actually sat down with a woman he was dating. He listened 
to her to see if they had, a, you know, a value, a shared sense of values that he could work with. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? And then he told her, look, I need uh, I'm, I'm looking for someone who can support my business, but I'm also looking for somebody that, you know, can help me domestically in the home. You know, because that's not that's not something one can assume. Now, not every man. Can't. Not every man is going to ask for the same things or require the same things, but he was unapologetic about the things he needed because he recognized that gave her a chance to say yes or no. She could either get with that or she couldn't. And he put it out there early as opposed to getting with her and then being disappointed and frustrated that hoping she was wishing. hoping and wishing she would. Uh, work so the game's coming out. He laid it out. This is what I need. But in regard to sex, you talk about soul ties and I want to read a, a paragraph from your book, if I can, where you talk about soul ties. And I want you to kind of go into that a little bit. Um, you said, where we get caught up the most is with sex. Whenever we finally find someone who fulfills our sexual desires, it's hard to throw all the sexual chemistry away, even if it's a dead end relationship. Many men enjoy the explosive sexual chemistry with the wrong woman uh, because of how alive they feel when the sex is that good. It's too easy to get stuck there without knowing that you're caught up. As I reflect upon my strongest unhealthy soul ties triggered by sex, I always knew that I couldn't tell her no long enough to avoid us having sex again and re-intensifying our soul tie. She knew she wasn't the one for me, but figured that if she kept me going, then I would be too caught up to go after the woman I was actually meant to be with. She knew I wasn't the one for her, but she was nonetheless not ready to let go of me. I must admit though, keeping me coming almost worked because for a while I was very caught up in the sex as caught up as I ever became in situations like these, I've always known better than to think sex defines a relationship, no matter how much fairy dust I was snorting. That was profound to me, man, because I've been there. And I yep. want, and if you can explain, go into that a little bit. We got well, about know, we got about thirteen minutes left, um, and 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 we might be able to get in a quick call. We had a couple callers earlier, but it was a little too early. It was about five ten minutes into the show. But um, call in at three one zero nine two eight seven seven three three if you got a question for Nakata, we can answer real fast. But go into that. Bottom so, line is, bro, sex is a hell of a drug, and then you add other drugs to it. Mm. You get, <laughs> mm. and wh- whether that be a, 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 a simple drug as alcohol, but alcohol is 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 the don data of drugs, anyways. Mm. So you know, um, sex is a hell of a drug, and, and and once that becomes a real popping thing, and you really enjoy the intensity of these kind of um, relations with somebody, I mean, you you might think you love them. And and I know I've been there, and and many many people shit. Some people got married off that alone. Yeah, Lord. Yeah, get what I'm saying. And yes. then I mean, and, and you ain't been through it if you hadn't considered it yourself. You mm-hmm. know, so and and almost entirely off sex. So th- that's just the facts. It happens, and and that's why you know these soul ties need no sex in order to break them. You know, you're not breaking them by 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 breaking her off with some D every so often. No. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. no. Yeah, yeah it, pulling it, back. We got, you, you got you got you you gotta you gotta sharpen the jade stone um another way. You know, you, you can't you can't it's not gonna work. Especially yeah. if you keep and then that's the thing, people be having the biggest problems with each other sleeping each sleeping with each other. You know? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. So it's a, it's a you're saying it's a, like a distraction from from what's really going on. It, for most men who are in those predicaments, they're merely in those predicament of sexual addiction and and um and substance abuse because they don't use that energy towards finding themselves and working on themselves. Mm. That that's the source of the problem in the first place. If you had yourself to focus on instead of thinking that life was about valid being validated by your approval ratings by women. You get what I'm saying? If you had yourself, if you were taught from a very young age the importance of manifesting this thing that's within you, if you were taught that, bro, mm-hmm. please, bro, everybody would already know what you're on because it would have been evident probably from a young age. We wouldn't be running around here at 30-something years old confused about who we are. That's how important this process that most of us never had is. And mm-hmm. so, you know, your ability to to make the necessary adjustments as an adult, as a man, no matter what age you may be, is critical. And, and you know, that's what the book is about. That's what the movement is about. That's what everything that I'm doing is about because, you know, so many men have 
gotten back to me, you know, and, and told me what a difference, you know, the, the strategies make in their life. And, you know, it, it's amazing because, you know, like um, in my course, I was just talking about um, the fact that, you know, that's exactly what happened. I profited from my pain. I wasn't going to let anything keep me from manifesting what it is that I need to manifest in my life, mm-hmm. you know, and, 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 and I was there where emotions and things not going right, me being taken advantage of, all these kind of different things, F ups, li- mm-hmm. life stuff, you know, mm-hmm. you know, working a sales job and not making any commission, you know, you know, having your wages garnished, being pulled over by the police with your kid and the, and the, 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 the police says to you, oh, that's the child. <laughs> you know those type of things life happens but guess what if you let that keep you from being able to to to, to channel what it is that you you need to channel that's within you you will be repeating life happens stuff when you're 50 you know what right I'm saying? and that's and, and that's that's critical because you're talking about the difference between things happening to you and what you go create in life you know, and, and if you take the time and this is something because I'm going to actually have my my uh, my black male group read the uh, read the book because I want us to, to have a conversation around actually taking the time to do that, because I wish I would have more purposely done this at 20. You know what I mean? Now, I, I, I took the time to build my career. But I really wish I'd have taken the time to really put the same energy into building my career into into each area of my life so that I would have been more prepared. And that's what I want these young men to do uh, when we go through this book. I want them to actually take the time to step back and say, OK, you know, what is it that I'm about? What is it that I want to do? You know, how can I achieve that? And where does relationship or relationships, however they define that, where does that fit? into a life plan because most of my young men don't have a life plan even though they're in college and mm-hmm. this is what's critical about it they represent like you know the 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 upper echelon of young men their age because they made it to college but they don't have a life plan and that 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 becomes concerning because i see what ends up having happening when you don't have one so i just i you know i want them to actually take that time to actually reflect and say, okay, what is it that I'm trying to build? What, what what do I want my life to look like? And then how do relationships, including friendships, you know, I, where, where do they fit or where do I, I choose to have them fit? And, you know, maybe some relationships don't need to happen. You know what I mean? Not, only with, not only with women, but with some of my boys. If I'm moving in a direction, I had a, I, I remember I, I came home to visit, uh, you know, I think this is like my second year in school and I saw one of my best friends and we were we were driving and um you know we got pulled over I don't remember if I was speeding or whatever and he was like oh um you know by the way I got some I got some stuff on me you know uh and I'm thinking wait a minute hold on wait <laughs> we driving in this car and we getting pulled <laughs> over by cops and you got something on you that could get me in trouble and you know what I mean and you say you love me you say we're brothers but you know what I mean? Your decision and my decision to, to engage you could have derailed my entire life plan. You know what I mean? So from that standpoint, mm. I, you know, I had to step back and say, OK, is this the kind of you know, friend I want to have? And everybody has to answer that question for themselves. But but taking the time to develop a sense of who you are and what you're looking for out of life, just that reflection is powerful, man. It's very powerful, but and let me be frank for everybody who's listening to this, and it, it, it can be as what kind of mother that is, what kind of father, uncle, brother, or sister that is, and in many cases it is. So you know when when you are out here really trying to you know trim, get rid of the excess fat, the people who do not serve you, the people who do not help you, you know I know it's hard, but. It'll be mama, daddy, sister, cousin, auntie, brother, aunt, friend, cousin, first cousin, the ones that you were with. It would be them too. Mm-hmm. So, so mm-hmm. It, you know, it definitely boils down to those friends from the neighborhood and various other friends that you've known the longest as well too. But you know, like it, 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 I say, I say to people, listen, you ain't popping. You're not doing anything if um if, if you're not losing some folks. Honestly, mm. 
So you should. <laughs> so you. So you saying you should actually prepare to lose some relationships once you figure out where you're going in life. I, I mean, once you figure out where you're going in life, you're gonna instantly start losing. You ain't even gotta prepare. Mm. Mm-hmm. Because you're gonna be so committed to your thing that by nature you didn't even realize that so and so don't talk to you no more. Mm-hmm. You know, with my time between what I do, I realized that I couldn't I couldn't talk to so and so anymore because every time I talked to so and so, the nature of the conversation wasn't uplifting. Mm. Or, or 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 profitable or it cost me time that I could have been using to something else, but I really like talking to so and so, but I can't. Mm-hmm. So You know, for a lot of people, their time's already slotted out with jobs and various other responsibilities, you know, you know, so it's up to you and how you you manage other people around you. But that's definitely a a huge part of um, of of this whole taking a break thing. Like I might have to tell up, I might need to take a break from you. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? Like every time I see you you on some negative stuff, like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like. Stop asking me about a job. Look how long I ain't worked one. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, like support. You know, support what I support what I got going on right now. Like, if you are not a part of this movement that I'm doing right now, I holler. Mm-hmm. Right, and that's okay. And that's and that's one of the things I I, I definitely want people to know that that's that's perfectly okay that that happened. Um, let me see. We got about three minutes left and, and, and I want you to tell us, you know, where we can get in touch with you, where people can find the book. But before you do that, what is Mm -hmm. it, especially for young men, what is it that you want them to get out of this book more than anything else? That you're, that you're rich, you're wealthy and, and, and you can pull that outside of you by focusing on you by focusing that one unique on that one unique talent don't worry about if somebody else has a similar one you know stop worrying about everything else and everyone else and really focus on that thing you know if you can connect with it let's say something that you felt ever since you were a child connect with it, 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 it it's that's it's probably truer to who you are than than who you thought you were so in 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 all reality this is this is it Mm -hmm. this is it these are the Mm -hmm. things that make you admire some of the world's billionaires because they stuck to that it thing stick to your it thing and 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 be willing to cut people off with with your with your mighty sword to to protect your space in order for you to grow you Mm got to get serious about this Mm -hmm. you got to get serious about this that's yeah. it. That's all my coaching is about. That's all everything is about. You know, you know, the, going in relationships is just like a whole different bracket, though. You know, yeah. so the first aspect of this is the break. And the break is to really just drop everyone else and really focus on what it is that's going to make you, you know, a billionaire. You know, this- um, and, and we're talking about not necessarily financially, you know, because the term billionaire or re- originates from who, those who have a lot to give. Now that's important, um, you know, because my student, the CSU system here in California, the California State University school system, 70 percent of black men drop out in the first year. And that's the small percentage that actually make it. So so actually being able to step back and, and, and take a break and create a plan is incredibly important. And I think it would turn around a lot of people uh, real quick. We got one minute left. Tell us where we can find you. Tell people where they can find the book. You can find the book on at thewisdomhut.com or you can go ahead and order it on Amazon. That's Heart on Break, thewisdomhut.com. You can look at my blog at heartonbreak.com. And I am, of course, on Instagram, I am Nakata. That's at I am Nakata. And, you know, I'm out here doing my stuff. Um, you got to join my, my members only groups, The Wisdom Hut on Facebook. Like, you know, it's really exclusive. We're, we're really out here just trying to show no. you that you got gold. And that's perfect. And and for those of you that celebrate Christmas, get a young man this book, get a get an older man this book. Uh, you know, if anybody you see who needs it, let them check it out. Thank you, Brother Nakata, for being on the show. I appreciate it. And um, as far as the Onyx Report, we will be back uh, December uh, 1st and 3rd uh, Wednesday. So our next show will be uh, November 4th. I mean, it's December 4th. 
and we look forward to coming back. All right.